Hey guys, I'm CT Stealth, and once again, this is the introduction to 3D effects. Uh, this particular portion of the video will be focusing on rigid bodies. Uh, in order to understand rigid bodies, I've made this little setup here, so you can kind of get a feel what what you're getting yourself into. Uh, I gotta say, uh, this is stuff that you can't necessarily control. You can manipulate it to a certain point, and but there's sometimes it's you just you just have to start over, to be honest. Uh, just gonna say that right now. It can either come out amazing or it can just be an absolute disaster. So, uh, that being said, uh, what I'm about to do here, I'm not even really sure if it's gonna do it the way I want it to. Uh, I got a series of bricks here. I put a red blend shader so you can kind of see the reflectivity of it uh, whenever it's like turning. And, uh, I got a sphere and what I want the sphere to do is I want it to hit the bricks and I want the bricks to fall and crumble down. Now I could keyframe that but it would take forever because of all those bricks. Um, so what we have here is we have rigid bodies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to dynamics and I have all these new menu sets here. Dynamics can be found in Maya 2010 and anything below. Uh, however, the end dynamics can only be found within the 2009 and 2010 version. But uh, for this portion, I'm going to be focusing on the dynamics. So, um, first I need to kind of set it up. So I'm just going to hit play, and as you can see, nothing happens. So what I have to do is I have to set what is called a passive collider. A passive co collider is basically something that is going to not move. It's nothing that's going to um, do anything. Uh, what you have to understand about rigid bodies is there's two types. There's a passive and active. Now a, like I said, a passive never moves. However, if I make it a passive, you can change it back to an active you know, via the channel box or the attribute editor here. However, uh, this is the floor, so I'm just going to make it a passive rigid body and um, so I'm gonna have these bricks be an active rigid body so I'm gonna select those and deselect that and then go to active rigid body now if I click play once again nothing happens but you'll notice how slow my play blast is going so uh, I'm gonna make this one an active rigid body and the, and the active rigid bodies what they do is they they are, they are the things that are going to be moving. They're going to hit passive colliders or passive uh, passive rigid bodies and they will do the reaction. They will, they will do the moving. The passive doesn't move and active moves. So now I'm going to kind of set this up. So I'm going to go to... Let's see. No, what should I do? First yeah, I need to place the gravity. So I'm going to select these and select, deselect my plane and go to fields and hit gravity. Alright, so now I have a gravity field on my, in my scene, it's right here. Uh, anywhere I place it doesn't matter. And once I hit play, you'll notice once again it's going to go really slow. Uh, the reason for that is, for two reasons. One is the fact that these bricks all have gravity and they're all moving but because they're all active they're colliding with one another and since they're colliding with one another it causes the machine to bog down so how do I fix that well what I have to do is I have to come in here and I have to select these cubes and I typically select the ones that are not touching one another and I can come to these different little things here. Let me find it real fast. It's on the. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the rigid body. And no, let me go to the channel box. That might be a bit better. Okay, yeah. Here's the collision layers here. And what it does is, it's kind of like Photoshop. If you're familiar with Photoshop, anything below of the layer system. The lowest layer is the one that's uh, in the background. So that's what these collision layers are. For every number I set will represent one layer. 
all of the collision layers are defaulted to zero, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I select these random ones here, and you typically don't want them to touch. And I'm going to select select them to be on the collision layer one. So that means everything that's on the one collision layer will only collide with one. So this brick will never be influenced by the same brick um, if it's on that layer. So the you know if it's on the zero layer, then all the influence all, only the bricks that are on the zero layer will collide. And that's that's kind of the the principle. So you want them to not uh, be touching because uh, you want less calculations for the collisions to occur. So after I would like set all the collision layers on different ones, and you can have as many as you want. You can have 10, 15. Uh, all you have to do is just type in the number, and and that's a collision layer. So anything on the ones collide, anything on the Two's glide, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, so we got the sphere here, and I need to break it. So let me go to animation, and I got these constraints and formers. Make sure I got the right. No, I don't want that one. Go back. I can get it. Yeah. Okay. So under the soft rigid bodies, uh, I get the nail pin hinge spring barrier. Uh, I want a nail constraint. A nail constraint kind of like places this. Uh, it's basically a nail, but it's like a string that attaches to the, the object. So if I hit, put this right over here, and I were to hit play, I'm not going to hit play because it's just going to be chaos and you won't be able to see anything. The ball will come forward hit the uh, the bricks and the bricks will go flying. Uh, oh snap. That is crazy. Yeah, I have I don't have my collision layer set properly, so the ones all the all the ones are not being influenced by the zeros. So they're going through the zeros. So I need to make sure that I have even collision layers everywhere. But as you saw, the, this, this sphere here is slowly coming forward, and it will it will hit the bricks. So as it hits, it creates the bulge, and the bulge comes out, and the bricks fall, and it hits the passive collider, which causes it to bounce. All right, so I'm going to pause that. Um, but the force was not a good magnitude, so. What we have here, we have. Well, I like to work with channel bugs for this particular portion. But what we have here is the mass. The mass is, if you remember from your basic physics, that the bigger the mass is, the greater the force. So uh, I'm going to increase this to, like, say, 100. And then I'm going to hit play again. And what it should do is it should hit the bricks with much more force. Yeah, let's see. As you can see, it kind of pushed a little bit, and it hit it a lot greater than what I originally had. And that's kind of the principles of rigid bodies. You kind of set up these little situations here, and in order to create an outcome. Like I said, I can't control those bricks. The, wherever those bricks fall, I don't. I have no idea. So if I wanted like a brick to come towards the camera. I would like select it and I would physically animate that keyframe and keyframe it to come forward at the camera. And that's the best thing that you can do for this particular case. So uh, um, to me that it didn't hit it with such speed as I hoped so I would adjust the nail constraint or I could um, I could adjust like the attributes of the sphere itself in the attribute editor. I can look at the rigid bodies here and and add the different types of frictions or bounciness or dampening and each one of these have a, has a specific function but unfortunately I'm about to run out of time so uh, in case you have any questions about rigid bodies uh, feel free to ask um, I'm going to 
create another video so I can go over the attributes of this scene in order to familiarize you a little bit better. Uh, see you next video.